Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Well, something like that, anyhow. So you might be asking, what the heck is that? Well, this is what I can do, but what I'm here to show you is Air Windows Ultrason X. Now the idea with this is The idea with Ultrason X is that you can do this. There's Air Windows Ultrasonic. It is filtering supersonic frequencies. And here's Ultrason X. It is also filtering ultrasonic frequencies. So here's the thing. Why am I demonstrating something that you can't hear? And why are there five plugins here instead of only one? You can hear they are all ultrasonic filtering, and you can't hear any difference between any of these things. We're running at 96K. It is doing a nice clean filtering on the super high frequencies. Here's the thing. The purpose of ultrasonic was to do a very steep filter. As we can hear, These are high frequency sounds, and you're not picking up any audible difference. A while back, I did a variation on this called ultrasonic light or ultrasonic medium, and I ran into some troubles with that. Folks found that they were softening the sound a little bit, and the reason is because they were doing the same stages of filtering, but I didn't have them set up exactly the way that they're set up in the original ultrasonic plugin. Let me show you what happens when we run Ultrason X without running all of the stages. We've got five of these. Here's one, here's two, three. Seeing a uh, pattern emerge? It says Rezo A through E. These are individual filtering stages that add up to a perfectly flat response. As you can plainly hear, but if you run into the final one, Rezo E, you'll notice that's no longer flat. Listen to the highs. And compare that to this. The way this works is we've got these five plugins, and each of those are one fifth of the original ultrasonic plugin. This one uses the equivalent of A into B into C into D into E. And each of these are different filter slopes. So the A filter slope is actually considerably 
brighter than the e-filter slope. It's got a higher Q. So if you use it all by itself, check out what happens. That is a substantial boost at the point where it's rolling off. If we had several of these all set to this, we'd get even more of a boost. Because it's not designed to operate this way. The way this is designed to operate is running into the first one and then The final ones all fit in with the A through E motif here. So there's your A. That is a higher steepness Q curve. It rolls off a lot faster, but it's got a peak. B is a shallower peak. C is shallower still. D is starting to get where you're losing uh, highs and it's rolling off so slowly. and E rolls off the slowest of all. And when you combine all of these, you get a nice steep cutoff without any variations. So here's the interesting thing. Suppose we did this. We've now got these out of order. We've got A, B, C, D, but E is in the front. But it's still the same thing. So here's the deal with this one. This is a little precursor into what I'm going to be doing with future versions of console. They're going to be designed in such a way that they use this technique. And we'll probably be starting with brighter cutoffs and then stepping them down as we go. To the point where here we have this back again as exactly the same as the ultrasonic filter. Oh, one more thing. This is the same technique that's being used in Console 7 Cascade. Console 7 Cascade has a boost in its initial distortion stage where it has this steeper roll-off, what I've got as Rezo A. So it has a bit of a supersonic hype going into the initial clipping. And that means the stuff after that in the chain, like see this one over here, which is Ultrason X um, fifth in this stage, that stuff tends to roll off the distortion products and the clipping and so on. So we can arrange things so that different channels or different places in the circuit sound more bright or dark in the way that they clip. I'm just going to switch the noise, noise over because it's annoying. So, what have we learned here? This is your way of making Air Windows Console even more complicated and difficult to use. You're welcome. Here's the thing. I'm going to be building this stuff into future console plugins, but we've already got earlier versions of console and we've already got purest console out there as just the distortion stages. So what you would be doing is say, let's pretend that we have a little multi-stage thing like a uh, two bus system of some kind. And let's pretend that we're going to use Purist Console to mimic that. 
assuming I can find it in here. Honestly, I should be able to. Well, in that case, let's find an older version of console if I can find that. Uh, apparently not. Well, let's use the regular version of console and put it in the same places to at least make the point. Use Pyrrhus console for this because I don't have it available right now. So what you'll have is before going into your channel simulation, you will have a ultrasonic filter. Then you can do whatever you want. And then you have a console setup. And that is going into another ultrasonic filter on the output of the channel. And then we're going into a sub mixer. And what do we do there? Well, first of all, we will use, you should be using uh, Purist console for this, but we'll go into console seven bus, and then into ultrasonics. And then you got whatever you're processing in here. And then guess what we do? We're going to go into another layer of console again. And then what will we do but go into another layer of console bus. And here on the fly, what we've done is we've made a ultrasonic filtering for an entire three level console setup, channels, submixes, like if, if I model like your Mac 8 bus, it's likely to be built in this kind of way. And uh, two bus. And the whole thing, of course, accepting the fact that we're running through layers of console that don't actually have what I need. But. If I, if I use one without actual console seven, it'll be cleaner. I'm over filtering this, but and if we ignore the fact that we're running console seven in here and assume that we're going to do just Pyrrhus console or something, which is not on this system at the moment uh, and We switch off these layers of console that have their own filtering and only use versions of it that don't have the filtering, like any previous one. Voila. We have a version of do-it-yourself Air Windows console with the ultrasonic filtering for use at higher sample rates and getting proper analog sound, resisting aliasing in a more natural way. And the entire system is running as much filtering as a single instance of ultrasonic. Kind of like this. except for you can swap around the stages of the filtering, such as putting your brightening stage of filtering somewhere later in the chain to get a desired effect. Like for instance, if I'm doing the Mac 8 bus idea, probably I'm going to be using more mellow versions of the filtering, like these ones in here, Reso C, Reso D, um, for the input stages so that I can just cascade them into each other and make them do crazy distortion. And then we'll assume that the submixes, if you push those, they might get bright and crackly. So we will take the submixes and have those run Reso A 
and those will have a bit of a high frequency lift which balances out against the other filterings that we're doing. So if this sounds too difficult for you, what I would say is skip all of that and use console 7 or use Pierce console 2 perhaps or do whatever it is that you need to do. But this version of the ultrasonic plugin, Ultrason X, is going to be my test bed for putting together stuff that will work like a more elaborate big console sound and where I can design both the filtering that I need and where in these stages of processing is it going to saturate or distort more brightly more darkly. If I was doing like an SSL kind of thingy, I might wind up having the final stuff be the the sharper cutoff and the earlier stuff be the flatter cutoff. If you're running through all of the stages, all five plugins, each of which are only one by quad filter, it will end up being flat. It will let it be as, as flat as ultrasonic or console uh, seven cascade, and it'll be flatter probably than um, Purist Console 2, and it'll be flatter than Ultrasonic Light and Ultrasonic Medium, because those ended up, you couldn't stack them in the way that you can stack this. The thing to bear in mind, of course, is that you have to have all five plugins in the signal path somewhere, and you have to have them, all of the letters represented, Reso A through Reso E. It needs to go through one of each somewhere. So I'm guessing some of you might find that very interesting. I honestly couldn't tell you. All I can tell you is that this is where my researches are leading. And once I'm finished with this, I will have entire console systems that are designed to use submixes where you have to use the submix in order to make it work properly. That's the idea. I'll build something where the general, the, the setup is a little bit more complicated and it assumes you're going to be running into a submix. But you can do this now if you would like. I don't have the correct, like, I try to pull up Purist Console and it's not showing up in my list because I don't seem to have it installed in this computer because they hadn't been using it. And that's unfortunate but it's still in the downloads and stuff. So if you want to experiment with this kind of stuff, I would suggest going for the original Purist console for your channel and bus plugins. It's the simplest processing. It's pretty bulletproof as far as not doing anything weird to get in your way. And you could also try console six or console five. All of these don't have the ultrasonic filtering that I build into current stuff. And this is splitting exactly what you would need out so that you don't have to have it built into the plugins. I can probably get slightly more sound quality from building it into the plugins, but uh, that's the idea. This is your test bed for if you want to get really into testing this kind of stuff out and do a little of your own kind of mad scientist stuff, make it happen. I will be interested to know if anybody is down for doing that and I assure you, that's what I'm going to be doing in figuring out some new stuff going forwards. And 2022 is going to see the results of this. This is just the, a tool that I will be using to design it. And I like to share my tools when I make them. So on that note, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.